Hi, my name is Edson. I'm from Binghamton University. And today I'm going to talk about my project, which is looking at reward taste conditioning in Drosophila. We all know that animals can taste a remarkable range of tastes, but it is not a simple process. Just like what we can see here, sweet donuts, bitter coffee, salt, sour lime. They are all different taste modalities. And we want to understand how these tastes are distinguished or integrated to drive behavior. Well, this behavior can be motivated by an internal state like starvation. So you need to have food, then get energy. Or it can be sensory perception. So you sense the food cue, then the food signal leads to the future behavior. Today, I want to talk more about feeding behavior motivated by experience and how it modulates neurons in the brain to build food preference. Also, all these are not only found in humans, but also in other animals like fruit flies. Here, fruit flies have specific sensory receptors on both their mouths, which is called the proboscis, and their feet, which are called the tarsi. As you can see in this video, they sense the taste cue with their tarsi and respond to it by extending their proboscis. So it causes proboscis extension reflex or PER. In this way, we can use the fly as a model to study the taste learning and memory. It has been demonstrated that the aversive memory is fueled by pairing appetitive taste like fructose with aversive stimuli like a bitter solution such as quinine. This aversive learning is also controlled by a brain region called the mushroom body, abbreviated as MB. So this region receives the quinine solution signal and processes it to build an aversive behavior. Now I want to discuss how to build a food preference by acquired taste. You may have a preference for something like pizza or ice cream because you recognize it and you know you like it. Sometimes you're trying to avoid new food like sushi, but after trying it, might even better than you expected. So you develop a preference for that food as well. To test this, we use fruit fly to build a reward taste conditioning assay. We get a conditioned stimulus abbreviated as CS, which is fructose here to the fly through the whole three phases of the experiment, pretest, training, and test. Ideally, it show that can lead to a constant response of PER in naive flies. Then we train the flies by pairing the CS with an unconditioned stimulus abbreviated as US. So we get sucrose, which is a sweeter sugar than fructose to the fly's mouth right after giving the CS on the tarsi. What we projected to happen is that the fly would be trained to learn that they get a reward of a sweeter sucrose after being touched with the fructose on the tarsi, then they will respond more to the CS of fructose. So the difference between the trained and naive flies could be calculated as delta PER, and it shows how much more the fly responded in the test. This is what we really found after measuring, and it showed a similar trend. Uh, so we normalized the data based on the first training, you see the green line that trained flies who received this US showed an increase in PER. Whereas the magenta line, which represents the naive flies who just received the CS, showed a decrease in PER. So the difference between the two groups in the test is calculated as delta PER, as the for formula showed over here. And uh, you also use this delta PER value and get it displayed as a blue bar. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to use this through my whole talk to exhibit the memory formation. Considering the assay, we wanted to see if the CS-US pairing is necessary. So we compare it to both CS only and US only. And a significantly higher delta PR score could only be found after pairing CS and US. This means CS-US pairing is required for the memory formation. Then we wanted to know how tight the CSUS are paired. So in the training, we kept the same time between trials, but we manipulated the amount of time between the CS and US. 
we found that only giving the CUS right after the CS leads to a significantly high delta PR score. As you know, we apply sucrose as the US in this assay, so the next step was to find out whether the sweetness or calories was a main factor in establishing the reward taste memory. So we compare sucrose to met G, an artificial sweetener which only contains sweetness, and sorbitol which only contains calories but is not sweet. What we found is that the sucrose and met G could exhibit a significantly greater delta PR score, so sweetness matters more for building learning and memory. Next, we wanted to figure out how well the flies can remember after learning. As we tested the CS more after training, we could gradually see Delta PR score goes down. We also wanted to find out how long the memory could last after training. So we changed the time between the training and test from three minutes all the way to two hours. And the significantly high Delta PR score could last at least one hour. Next, we wanted to be sure that reward taste memory is mushroom body dependent. So we introduced a temperature sensitive phenotype called Shibri, which can block the function of neurons within mushroom bodies at a higher temperature. So we utilize it through the whole experiment at both high and low temperatures, and test two specific mushroom body lines, 247 and C772, because they both represent particular neural subsets controlling learning within mushroom bodies. Then what we found is that the mushroom body lines, which are blocked by Shibri at a higher temperature, show significantly lower delta PR value. So this reveals that the mushroom bodies are necessary for building the reward taste memory. Finally, we focus on the genes which are involved in the adenosine cyclase pathway to establish learning and memory. We mutated genes like rutabaga, downs, and dopamine 1R2 receptor and use the assay to test flies that are carrying these gene mutations. They all show significantly lower delta PR scores compared to the wild type control, which means these genes are necessary for memory formation. To summarize, we first design this assay to test reward taste memory. Using this assay, we found that the appetitive memory is modulated by the sweetness but not calories, and it can persist for at least one hour. We have also found that mushroom bodies in the fly brain and the genes like rutabaga are required for building the reward taste memory. I want to thank all these people who have helped me with my research, my lab, my committee, and NSF, which partially funded my research. I love to answer any questions you have with my presentation. Thank you.